today I'm going to unbox Mark Herman's Churchill Big Three Struggle for Peace. This is published by GMT Games and they were kind enough to send this one to me so I'm excited to get it open. This is the third printing of this game in 2021. I'm not sure if there was any changes between the printings other than maybe some correcting some errata if there were but uh you know this is a popular one hence the third printing now this is part of the great statesman series i don't know if it was named that when this first came out but uh as of the third printing here there are other games in this series. There is uh, Pericles, designed by Mark Herman, and then there is also uh, Versailles 1919, uh, designed, uh, co-designed by Mark Herman and Jeff Engelstein. And uh, I've, again, as you can see, I have Pericles and Versailles, and uh, these are kind of a mix between a war game and a political game it's a, a little bit of both um the pericles is definitely uh, there's a political aspect or a political stage to it and then the results of some of those the, the, the discussions or the political side that allows you to uh, or gives you the the actions or orders or what have you to actually conduct your military campaign uh, there's some of that same aspect, I think, that's going on in Churchill. Uh, Versailles, on the other hand, is mostly political. This is the end of World War I, and so it's going into, you know, what was going on at the, uh, at the Versailles uh, negotiations, the Versailles Treaty negotiations, and, but it, there is uh, some worldly aspects or, or global aspects or or effects that take place on on uh, kind of a separate board, but it's not as uh, I mean I, some of these are conflicts, but it's not really focusing on a specific war. These are more like minor conflicts, whereas Churchill is going to be focusing on World War II. So you have the political conferences between uh, Stalin, Churchill, and Roosevelt, and later Truman. And the waging of World War II at the same time, whereas in Pericles, it's um, uh, a little bit different. It's it's uh, uh, Athens and Sparta, and um, you're dealing with the Peloponnesian War. And so they're, uh, th these two are, are a little bit closer in nature on how they're doing things. I think Churchill might be a little bit simpler. I don't know. Pericles was was a little daunting to get into, but once I got into it, it was very, very, very good. Versailles is a little bit more straightforward. Uh, maybe that's the Jeff Engelstein influence because it's a, just a little bit more Euro, a little bit more political, but you know, enough of all that, right? But that gives you an idea of the Great Statesman series. I'm excited about this series because there's more coming out in this series. Uh, there uh, are, are other, um, you know, other... Um, titles coming out and so i think this series is going to develop and it's going to be interesting to see where this goes because this is a, again not a not a straight war game but not a but not a pure political game either so uh third printing this is the relatively thick box there uh, as you can see you get a, a, a on the back here you get an example of the board which here's kind of your conference you know for the the, the conference table and this is kind of your political side where there's going to be different agendas and you're going to be uh, having conference attendees playing their cards for value to try to win these issues. And that will uh, translate to some actions on the battle board. And then you have two theaters in the battle board. You have the European theater and the Pacific theater. And there's going to be front markers that are going to be advancing along here. And when you get to Japan, well, then the Pacific theater is uh complete and then when you get to germany the european theater is complete um but there's also like uh colonies and country kind of uh minor uh players 
that you're going to uh, be trying to have influence in, either have political influence or having uh, underground or, or partisan groups, you know, involved in some of those areas as well. So, you know, a lot going on in this game. Uh, you know, I get at, at its core, it's not super complex, but um, there is a lot going on and, and it takes a little bit to, to get into to understand what's going on here. As you can see here on the complexity schedule, they have complexity is two. I think the basic core mechanics here are probably A2. You know, this this side of the board is relatively straightforward and easy. How things translate over here are a little bit more complex. And then when you add them together, I don't know if two is accurate. I might bump this up a little bit higher. But once you understand what's going on, maybe that's a little bit more accurate rating. Solitaire is nine. I don't know if there's a, a bot or a straight system in this. Uh, I'd have to check on that because there is some card play here. So I don't know if they just do the card play random or not. I, I, I haven't uh, read into that uh, enough there. So uh, then you got an example of your counters. Uh, this isn't a counter intense game in that this is really, there's the, the card play on this side of the board, which translates into what happens on this is really the, the key to the game. So let's... Uh, Let's get into the box and see what we we have here. As I said, it's it's. I think this Churchill's a little bit closer to Pericles uh, than it is to Versailles. Uh, I'm not sure which one came first uh, on that, or if they were developed at the same time. Nice thick box, nice thick GMT box here. And again, want to thank GMT for sending me this to get into. I really do like, uh, I like series and I like this series and, I, and and this is loosely called a series, right? Because they are all very different. Uh, each of the three games that I have, uh, these, these are very different in how they play. As I said, there's probably more similarities between Churchill and Pericles, but they're very different uh, in how they do things. So you got your rules of play here, which are 36 pages. You've got a rules index on the back here. Um, looks like you've got some designer notes here. And you've uh, probably an example of play. Yeah, it looks like there's an example of play in the books itself. And here's Solito. So it does have solitaire rules. That's cool. That's why you always, uh, here's appendices. That's why you always page backwards to forward, right? Uh, so you have solitaire rules here. I'll read into that. Looks like it's only a. Um, page of solitaire rules so let's see how that play and they rank it really high for solitaire play so looking forward to that uh, here's the campaign scenario so this is your scenarios in here so starting on page 18 are the different scenarios and i think there's a there's a, a few starter ones at the beginning that only do a couple of conferences basically your turn track um is uh, based on the conferences there's like i think 10 different conferences so if you only want to pay, play like two turns, you're going to do conference, I think, 9 and 10, right? Uh, and then uh, maybe, yeah, I think that's right. And um, if you want to play th you know, three turns, then you do conferences uh, 8, 9, and 10, st stuff like that. And there's, there's different cards, and the cards, these conference cards basically are kind of like a newsletter, right, or a newspaper. Or kind of, there's like events, and that you just go down these events, and it affects gameplay for that turn. Then you play the turn, then you flip over the next one and play the turn, and and so on. So that's kind of how the how the conferences work. And they're based on the, some of the, you know, the, the conferences that took place during that time, like Yalta and uh, Potsdam and stuff like that. Um, I think Potsdam was one. Anyway, so into the rules proper here. So but only 17 pages of rules. Uh, dual column, color, there's play notes, there's design notes uh, in different colors to help you through there. So, you know, 17 pages is not, not too much, right? So there you go. That's the rules of play. We've got some stickers here. These are probably for... I think there's blocks for the different leaders on whether they're active or inactive and these are the different fronts um yeah the uk front us front and ussr front so there's some stickering going on here whenever there's blocks there are stickers right 
here is your so it looks like you got two oh three oh because you know three players is uh, the ideal situation here uh, which having one represent the Soviet Union, the UK, and the US. So you got three player aids here. Here's the Stalin bot. Oh, great. Okay, cool. There's a bot. That's cool. That's reminiscent of Labyrinth and Coin here. So you got your Stalin bot on this one. Okay. You've got your Churchill bot and you've got your Roosevelt bot. Awesome. So. So in these bots, there's like a decision tree, and you go on and make your decisions based on that. So And there's only one page of rules on Solo, so this should be relatively easy to get to. So may, may, maybe the not high rating for solitaire play is well-deserved. So it looks pretty easy there. So there you got three different bots there, and then you have your player's aid, um, which has your annotated sequence of play, which that's good, annotated, meaning that there's a rules reference there, so you can turn to the page in the book to go over the rules. Really good when you're learning the game, but always nice to have a reference to look stuff up. Here's your victory point schedule. There's a lot of victory points. Here's that Euro uh, aspect coming out of this. There's tons of different victory points, and you've got general, colonies, access surrender, Europe, Pacific, and the A-bomb. Yes, developing the A-bomb is, is part of this uh, three-end game situations. So there's different in-game situations, So and all these are the uh, are uh, identical. So that's cool. So there's your player aids, and that's on you know good card stock. Then we have the counter sheet. Looks like there's just one counter sheet. Again, I told you this was not counter-heavy. Uh, these are pre-rounded, so they're going to be easy to punch out. Uh, looks like they're decent thickness there. And uh, some of these are going to be the agenda items. Then there's, uh, these are kind of, like, production is kind of like the economy or currency that you use. Then you have some, uh, there's some minor powers, I guess. And I'm not sure what, or those are just markers for the board. Then there's support. This is something that comes out of the agenda. You, there's some support that goes on the board, and that helps you move. The more support allows you to roll more dice or to roll, roll a get a better uh, chance when you do roll to move along one of the tracks. You know whether the it's in the European theater or the Pacific theater. And there's some naval. Some of the tracks require naval in order to advance along the track you have to have a certain number of naval especially in the pacific but even like the, the italian front requires it as well so this is what the naval counters are for and these are double sided there well there's a little some really small print right there so and that's like on some of the agendas that's kind of cool so like on the back of the agenda it tells you a little bit about what you get when you win that agenda item. Let's get to the board here. It is wrapped. Well, let's put that out there for a second. We got cards. So there's different card decks. There's a deck for uh, USSR, for USA, for UK. And then this is that conference deck. Those specific, you know, as you can see right there, this, these are for the, 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 there's variations of each of the different conferences. I think again, I believe there's ten, so there's going to be different variations. So you got a little bit of replayability there. You're not always going to have the sack. Oh, first conference is always going to happen. Casablanca is always going to be this way. No, there's some variation on what happens. So that gives you some something there. I'll, I'll open those up. Then you have these cards. These are the different attendees, or delegates, or diplomats, whatever you want to call them, that are you, that attend the conference. Uh, and they're going to have a number here. I'll I'll get the board open when we when we talk about that. Uh, this isn't meant to be a rules explanation. This is more of a unboxing. But I might want to go in a little bit of description here. These are your um, I can't remember what that's called, like the underground or yeah, I, I'm losing the name here. But it looks like you got some tiddlywinks there, whatever those things are called. Uh, but in the different colors of the three different um, powers. You got dice in the three different powers, colors. You've got baggies. It's not a GMT game without baggies. And you got blocks. You got baggies and blocks. 
So these blocks are going to be like for the front. Those were those stickers were for to move the, the fronts along here. Uh, then the, these are like political influence or some of these these rounded ones here for the different three different nations. And then the, the squares are like that. That brown is Italian army. The black, I think, is German. And the gray is uh, Japanese. And there's armies and naval. So I wonder if the, I think there's a different color for that. But um, so that's so there's some some good old wood in there. All right, let's get the let's get this box or sorry, the map open. Let's see what we have here. And I went, a uh, video I did recently with uh, Al Moravid was went a little long because I got a little excited and just couldn't shut up. But I'm trying to go through this a little bit quicker. But I mean, if you're interested in, in this game, you're gonna wanna see all that it has, right? This is a nice mounted map board here. Ooh, boy. And pull this. Let's see if I can get some stuff out of the way here so we can get a better look at this bad boy. Here we go. Let's see what I can do here. So there you have it. I wonder if, yeah, you guys can see pretty much all of that. Uh, that will lay flat eventually. Um, here's your conference table. So this is where the politics kind of uh, side of things happen. So let's get to some of these cards and see how they go on that board here. Um, let's let's start at the where where you start at on the turn, and that is with the conferences. So there are. Yes, there are 10 conferences, and Potsdam was number 10. So there's different variations. It looks like there might be three different variations for each of the conferences. So for Casablanca, then it, uh, you're going to go down. If if this is the one that you'll uh, pre-generate, you'll like if you're going to play all 10 conferences, you'll shuffle like each of the three, and then you'll uh, each of the three for each of the different conferences, and you'll lay those out. So you'll have 10, and you'll push put the, the 10 on the bottom, and then when it's your turn to flip over a conference, you'll flip over the first conference, and look, we got Casablanca A, and you'll just go down the line. So uh, Montgomery must use one production for offensive and Mediterranean theater, okay? So you'll do that. You have to use a production, so a production will have to go to the Mediterranean theater, and you'll just read down this whole list here, and it's going to affect, you know, the, the green are the, is the UK, uh, the red is Russian and or the the US, U, USSR, and blue is the United States. And then there's usually a battle type effect of what's going on, and then there's a partisan uh, type effect of you know what's going on. So the, the you're going to go through each one of those three. Then you're going to play your turn, and um, you'll do the political side first. Then you'll do the military side. And then it's rinse and repeat. Then you'll flip over the next card, and what do we have? We have Washington, D.C., and then you go down this, and you keep going through that. So that those are the conference cards, and there's three of each of the ten conferences. So um, quite a bit of replayability there with that. Uh, then we got – let's go to the – let's go to the – start with the U.K. It is named Churchill, right? So we should start with the U.K., and what you have here is these are the U.K. Uh, staff deck. So you're gonna have this deck of cards to uh, play on your turn, and one of these should be Churchill. Yeah, there's there's Churchill right there. And uh, when you'll pick, you'll pick an agenda item. Well, first of all, you'll bid. The first thing you'll bid and see who's gonna go, be the first one to go, and you'll put one of these cards face down and flip it over, and whoever has, has the highest number is going to be able to. Um, pick their conference issue. So this is your conference issues up here. And then they'll they take that number minus the number of the lowest who, who picked their bid, and they're gonna move that far on their conference track. Like this is a UK track. So let's say they took the global one, they'll move the global up, and let's say someone picked a two. So five minus two is three. They'll go one, two, three, and they'll be up here on the UK track. 
at the end of the this round, if any of the agenda items are on your track outside the center, you win that agenda item and you get whatever, uh, Johnny, tell them what they won. No, you get whatever is on the back of that. If you're able to advance it all the way up to the chair, you, you get it automatically. It's kind of protected and nobody can move it anymore. As long as it's on this track, when when it's other people's turn, they can play a card and try to move. They can pick that same agenda item and try to move it down the track back over to their side. And then, you know, and so this, this tug of war game, the politics section is really kind of this tug of war of playing these staffers and trying to move the agenda items uh, up and down track so you get a hold of them. And these staffers also have, uh, I mean, the nice thing about it, you get their name. These are actual real people, political people that hap that took place in, in the, the politics side of this uh, war. They have their title, but then they also have an attribute. So they're all going to, it's kind of a special power, so to speak, uh, or sometimes it's a weakness, right? But they're going to have an attribute that affects this portion of the game as well. So, and there's quite a few of these, uh, and, you know, some, some of their attributes are, are really kind of uh, extreme, like this health, uh, Sir Dudley Pound here. Uh, after each use, you roll a die, and a Rosora 1 of 3 dies, okay? So, look at that. I mean, boom, gone. So, um, and then Winston, then you have these leaders. What the, what it is uh, with the leader, so let's say I picked Dudley, I picked, let's say I picked uh, 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 Mount, Mount, Mount Batten, put him out there, but then I want to use Churchill, because he's only a 1, so then I, I can immediately play Churchill while well, resolving any of his effects then I can play Churchill and then this guy is is out of uh, out of that play this is what what the card that controls and you know he's got some superpowers here right because he's got a seven so that he's going to move rip, rip right up that track he's also uh has some attributes too that you play on a global issue but he also has a health issue too uh uh Winston liked uh like the bottle so um you roll two dice and on two to four he suffers a heart attack so he's going to be out for the next conference so there, there's some special abilities here so there's a lot of decision on who you use when you use them uh and some of the effects of that and there's some special attributes that oh that's good for that agenda item or that conference issue and i might want to use it for that so that's kind of a cool thing um and when you use them that's why you had the the sticker for the leaders they go from uh, uh, active to inactive, um, or inact yeah a inactive to active, and so they, they you show that they've been used because there might be the, if a leader's been is activated, that might be uh, you know trigger some of the other attributes on some other people's cards, and so there's stuff going on there with that. So, so that that's the um, that's the UK staff. Let's look at the Ruskies here. I thought I had this. Open here, and uh, of course the leader is going to be Stalin, and he his weakness is paranoia. He just gets real paranoid and uh, messes up some stuff there. There's some really interesting guys here. There's one guy who ran the Gulag. So, you know, the, the next Russian that you play, the uh, USSR person that you play after uh, Soviet that you play after him. Uh, they get they get a chance to they have to roll a die and they get a chance to be th thrown in the thrown in the gulag. That's a uh, that's awesome, isn't it? Um, yeah. After playing or discarding the next Soviet staff card, this conference roll one die six on a roll of one. Remove that card from the game. Get sent to the gulag. So there's a lot of history in here too, right? So, um. So there's this tug of war aspect that goes on in uh, this side of the board, and uh, but you have these special attributes and some of these you know triggers that you that that maybe play off some of the conference issues. Plus some of the conference issues, you're going to want to get certain ones to help you, you know, get set yourself up on this side of the map. So a lot of, a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, Roosevelt, of course, uh, you know, has health issues. Uh, and it, you know, died during the war. And you know, after each use, you roll two die on a roll of two or three. He's gone, and then Truman comes in. And Truman is his weaknesses. He's inexperienced. I mean, this guy 
had no idea what he was getting into, uh, but, uh, you know, acquitted himself very nicely, um, in my opinion. But, um, you know, he's got a weakness that he, he, his seven's not a seven until they develop the A-bomb. So he needs some, he needs some backing behind him. And then he goes back up. He's a four until you get the A-bomb and then he becomes a seven. So anyway, so that's, that's a lot of that game. Here's this tug of war that plays out on this side of the board. Then, um, then you move over to this side of the board and it's it's a lot of it's it's a lot of these markers here's the it's these blocks you're trying to move these fronts up uh and then you're also uh moving uh you're putting um moving the japanese or the germans are putting their cubes out uh and eliminating some of your support or blocking you of going on this track and you kind of have to roll to kind of advance on this track so a lot a lot of stuff uh going on there uh, there's also this, um, there's kind of a built-in AI. Um, so it's, I guess there's two AI. So you have the bot for solo play to play the other two powers. If you're going to play, let's say you play the US, we saw that card. There's a bot for UK and there's a bot for uh, the Soviets. But there's also a, a AI for the, the, uh, the Axis powers, right? And so this is kind of the... Uh, order of of how the japanese move and do things you just go down this list if this is present then you do it if not then you go and you just keep on going down until they place their cubes out uh and and you know do their uh effect on this side of the board and then europe is the same thing for for germany up there then you have the a-bomb track here this is a research track that's one of the conference issues that allows you to move this. So, you know, that's that's an important uh, track uh, that uh, has an effect on the game. Also, how far your fronts go. That's one of the victory point conditions. Uh, so at the end of the game, if the UK is here, the UK mainly does the China-Burma track. So if they're here, they get five victory points. The US does the Central Pacific track. Oh, you can't see that because it's off, off camera there. So I do here. They do the Central Pacific track and the South west pacific track and so if they get to iwo jima or okinawa there's victory points to be had there uh in the uh, in the european theater the russians have the eastern theater the british have the or the uk have the mediterranean theater and the u.s has the uh western theater and there's also an arctic theater as well if you go look way way up there it doesn't really have a track it's just a box and that's handled a little bit differently as well that's the game. Uh, uh, as, that's a very, very, very high overview of the game. You, you're not going to be able to play the game based on those instructions because uh, they're really not instructions. There's, but I just want to give somewhat of my understanding of how this game plays out. Um, this does not cover everything. Your mileage may vary, whatever disclaimer you want to add. There's also this, uh, you put like a, a pawn here and... Uh, certain things move move that pawn, and then if it's on closer to you, that's going to give you some benefits. There's an aspect of that game. I can't re recall how that gets moved. I don't know if that's an agenda item or something else. There's this uh, Paul Mill table, political military table. That's going to affect some things. Um, and I think that's where some of some of this comes in, which is the golly, I need to look that up. It, it's it's the uh, partisan. That really kind of affects a lot of the partisan activity. Um, I want to see if I can get that real quick here. That is the translucent pl plastic tokens. That clandestine network. There we go. Clandestine network. There's your clandestine network, right? So um, that's what you have. That's what you get in a box of Churchill. Again, uh, many, 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 many thanks. Did I miss a many to uh, GMT for sending this to me? I got to do some stickering tonight. But uh, this is this looks awesome. This looks very interesting. This is different. This is out of the way. This is uh, it's a war game, but it's not. It's a political game, but it's much, much more. Uh, it fits into a series, sort of. Uh, but it, has, it looks like it's got a lot of rich decisions in there. You've got a nice tug-of-war politics game here based on historical 
uh, characters and, and events that plays out. And then you're playing out World War II in a different fashion. I mean, this is very different type of uh, rendition of World War II. I've, I've very few games, I don't dare say, I don't know if I've seen any games, other than maybe Blitzkrieg has kind of a tug-of-war aspect on World War II. This one's more of a, you know, a, a, a track on World War II that's a little bit more, you know, linear than, let's say, in, in Pericles. Pericles looks very much more of a, a point-to-point war game uh, based on the effects of politics. This is this this track where the Axis are putting their cubes out and blocking you and you're trying to push a front. So to me, it's somewhat reminiscent, I mean, very, very loosely, of like the state of siege system, you know, of how the tracks are played out there. So this is pulling uh, from a lot of different sources and putting it into a very, you know, nice package. So hats off to uh, Mr. Herman because, you know, that guy uh, knows his stuff and uh, I, I don't know of any games of his that I've that I've played that I didn't just come away going, oh, that that that's solid. That is solid. So anyway, that's what I have for you today. That is Churchill in a box. That is the unboxing of the third printing of Churchill. Let me know if there's uh, some big differences between the first, second, or third printing. That's what I've seen. I've only seen the third printing, so that's what I got in my box. Um, let me know what you think about this game or, or any of the states, uh, the Great Statesmen, I believe is what it's called, series. Love to hear it. Love to know more about it. Uh, I'm going to enjoy getting into this because uh, it's got solitaire, right? And it looks like it's, it looks like it's got a decent uh, solitaire system uh, with those charts. If you're used to Labyrinth or Coin, you know, they have those kind of decision tree types charts. And so, and, but there's only like one page of rule that describes that. So this, this looks right up my alley and can't wait to get into this. So again, thank you, GMT. Thank you all for spending some time with me. I know it's precious, so any amount of time you spend with me is immensely appreciated. Uh, and hey, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for watching.